You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Radio Show, only on Financial News and Talk. Now live in studio, your host, local and national real estate expert and consumer advocate, Ron Siegel. And hello again. Welcome to Ron Siegel Radio. This is the show with no real boundaries as we discuss current events, financial markets, politics, sports, even poking fun at the rest of the media. This is the show that connects the dots of confusion delivered by conflicting media reports. We connect the dots. You know the actions you can take. How your family or business can benefit from current events, most of all, thank you for joining me. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day. We have a very focused show. We only chat about items that affect the roof over your head, your bank account, and anything I feel would benefit you. But before we get into our intriguing content today, please join me in welcoming our featured guest. And repeat offender, Mary Walters is in the house. Welcome. Good morning. Glad to have you with us. And let me remind you, if you ever have any home or finance related questions, I am the consumer advocate looking out for you. And you can reach out to me directly, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990 or com. Just remember, that's the number you call anytime for assistance. When you call that number, it comes directly to me first. There are... No operators standing by. I am it. Actually, there are Quiet, operators. Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. Yeah, we do have operators now. I should just, I should, you know, when you say the same thing over and over for so many years, 12 years we're doing this already. So we do have operators standing by, and I do have a great team. And when it comes to developing a financing plan, a plan to save you money, I personally work with you. Even though you don't have any need for us today, save this number in your phone for future reference, 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990 or ronsegalradio.com. Just remember, that's the number you call anytime for assistance. When you call that number, it comes directly to us. Now, we like to celebrate, celebrate every day on Ron Siegel Radio. Today, you know, what do I thought we'd celebrate something just a little bit different. How about celebrating that you know, we got a lot of freedom. We take for granted our freedoms uh, all, all the time. And had an opportunity recently to speak to one of the United States Congress members. And you, know, you listen to some of the things that are going on around the world. And it's uh, we, we are very, very lucky people living here in the United States. So that's our celebration of the day. And I thought I'd also give you a little bit of something new. We haven't done this one in a while either. How about some key terms for home buyers? We don't, ever, we don't usually, we usually save this for workshops. But I'm going to give this one to you right now this morning, and we'll chat a little bit about, I wonder why uh, my computer just did this to us. we gotta, got to love these things. Ah, there we go. Josh will just get to cut some stuff out. What the heck? Okay, so key, key terms for home buyers. Here we go. How about this one? Appraisal. What is an appraisal? So as I mentioned, we like to do. We usually do these in workshops. A report highlighting the estimated value of the property completed by a qualified third party. This is what lenders rely on. They'll rely on the appraisals to validate the home's value and ensure they're not lending more than the home's worth. The appraisal does not tell you what you should pay for the property. All it tells you is what the appraiser, a third party who has no vested interest, says that the property is worth. Do they know? Well, sometimes they can't even use what we might call logical information, right? They've got to go based on the rules that are set for appraisal. So even though you may have a high net worth or a high priced property, and I'm just going to say in Anaheim, and the closest properties that are in the same property value are in Orange, they can't use them, even though they might be a block away, they're different cities. So the rules say they have to be within the same city. So an appraisal doesn't necessarily tell you what you should pay for the property. It's just a guide for the lender, for the investor, to know what the appraiser comes up with, an independent third party. Closing costs. Fees required to complete the real estate transaction. These are paid at closing. Your lender should be giving you a complete list of closing cost items, including points, Some people think points are bad. They are not always bad. There are benefits to using points. It all depends on your long and short-term goals. Taxes, title insurance, 
lender fees and more. That's closing costs. Credit score, big, big important issue on your to get a loan. So a number ranging between three and eight fifty. Now we we the as a lender, lenders only use FICO scores. They don't use FACO scores. They don't use Vantage scores. They don't use Credit Karma, Credit Sesame, any of the other ones, those freebies. They don't use them. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac require a FICO score. And it uh, just, and it's, what is a FICO score? What is that score? Well, it's a algorithm put together to try and tell the lender what the likelihood is of your ability to repay the loan. That's the FICO score. And I have shared with you many, many times, how do you pay your credit card bills the right way? RSRCCPayment.com. RSRCCPayment.com. Give you a way. It's a little video we put together for you telling you the right way to pay your credit, your credit cards to benefit or to maximize your FICO score. Down payment. Down payments typically between 35 and 20% of the purchase price of the home. There are zero down programs. Veterans, we thank you for your service, but you don't have to put anything down. That is the best loan, best performing loan on the market is the VA loan. And you need to get educated on what programs are out there. Not every program is the right program for you. Mortgage rate. Interest rate you pay to borrow money. The lower the rate, the better. Might make logic. Although, you know, a 15-year rate is, is lower than a 30-year rate. Is that better? Maybe not, right? Most people, especially in Southern California, cannot afford a 15-year mortgage. And I'll submit to you, 15-year mortgages, in my opinion, are not good for you. They're not financially sound because there are better things to do with your money than put it into home equity. Home equity has a zero rate of return. So we want to always look at that as how it fits into your short and long-term goals. Here's another one. It's actually changing dramatically. So a pre-approval letter. So up until about uh, probably three years ago, there was a pre-approval letter had value. I'm going to share with you that pre-approval letter, the only value in it is it's a little bit better than a pre-qualification letter. If you really want to have some significance, what you want to have is your file totally pre-underwritten. So what is the difference? Pre-underwritten means that the only person that's going to uh, um, commit to your loan is an underwriter, right? So they have gone in and they've reviewed all your documents. They've validated everything. They make sure everything fits within the guidelines of whatever program you're using. And they've come back and they've signed off on the loan. Well, when they sign off on the loan, that's called pre-underwritten. So you can actually have your file pre-underwritten so that there's no loan contingency. The loan, all the, the loan is contingent upon, well, don't quit your job because that'll cause a problem. And don't go out and buy a new motorhome or a Mercedes. I've had somebody do that in the middle of escrow as well. Don't go do those things. But you can take that and you need an appraisal unless you get a waiver and you need clear title, and you're basically done with that whole process. So pre-underwritten, much, much better for you than having pre-approval or pre-qualification. Just a few of the terms right there, and if you also, if you go to RSR Workshops, RSR Workshops, we're going to actually, there's, there's, a, there's a program in there, or a part of that program that we have that we've put together for you, and you can actually go and see a whole series of processes. These are just some of the terms that we've got defined for you. But just a few of them for you. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate, current events, and the financial markets. When we come back, we're going to go over the monthly market report. We do that every month with Mary Walters. How supply and demand can impact your buying and selling goals. How could the Fed raising interest rates affect you? All that and more. You can reach me anytime. Our off-air number is 800 306 one nine nine zero eight hundred three zero six nineteen ninety, or ronsegalradio.com facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio and if you miss any part of our broadcast Ron Siegel one on YouTube Ron Siegel the numeral one on YouTube stay tuned we'll be back in just a few Ron Siegel Radio your home and mortgage connection 
Are you paying rent because you cannot afford to live in your dream home? Are you paying rent because you don't believe you have the down payment funds to purchase your own home? At Siegel Lending Team at RonIsMyLender.com has up to $25,000 to help qualified people purchase their own home at amazing interest rates. Contact the Siegel Lending Team today at RonIsMyLender.com. Again, RonIsMyLender.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037. RonIsMyLender.com. Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564, complete a three minute complimentary survey, and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. The Mortgage Minute today being brought to you by our friends at Geneva Financial. When you're ready for that next home loan, Geneva's got the programs and the products. You just need to make the call, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. You know, in the last segment, we were talking a little bit about points. And right now, in a rapidly rising interest rate environment, and with the Federal Reserve talking about increasing interest rates later in the week, well... Points are sometimes a very good alternative or good solution for you to get that interest rate down. It's going to be a little while until we see rates drop again. They will. They always go up and down. They, it's just cyclical. But we're going to see rates drop. But right now, if you're looking to buy a house or if you're looking to get out of debt, there are options for paying some points. They might be logical. What you need to do, in my, my personal opinion, Ask your lender for something called a total cost analysis. Total cost analysis. We're sharing those a lot right now with people that are looking at the rapid increase in real estate values and how do they get out of their get get rid of their mortgage insurance or get rid of that FHA loan. I am a big believer. Get in the game. If you need to pay mortgage insurance, so be it. If you need to pay the, get an FHA loan, so be it. Get in the game, and you're going to want to listen to some of what the numbers that we're going to share with you today about what's happened in the real estate market just in the last two years and what some people are forecasting for the future. That's the Mortgage Minute brought to you by our friends at Geneva Financial. When you're ready for that next home loan, Geneva's got the programs and the products. You just need to make the call, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. So every month uh, about this time, Mary Walters comes from Realty Pro 100, comes in and joins us to give a younger perspective on what this old man sees in the marketplace. We get some good data from our friends over at Keeping Current Matters, and they share a lot of, of interesting things, and we get to chat about it. And Mary's a, a seasoned in real estate, a real estate in, uh, owner, mm-hmm. uh, a, a Millennial already having taken that plunge. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. So first, uh, first one that they came up with price appreciation. So we we talked, boy, we talked last month or the month before that we said that prices, you know, probably leveled out and we're going to go down, and all of a sudden January back up again. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't think they're they're going to go down, but they're definitely like not appreciating as fast as they were. Right. Right. And and, and I'm glad you brought that up. So. Even though they went from January of 2021, they appreciated at 10%, peaked out at 18.5% in December appreciation. Actually, let's let's go and and we can actually look at, well, we haven't even seen them drop anywhere. What I was really looking to see is if we could demonstrate that, you know, January is up 19.1. That's the most recent data we have. That's a year over year number. So if they go back to... 17 for February. That doesn't mean they're going down. They're just not accelerating as quickly. Mm-hmm. Right? That's the key thing is we got to make sure that we differentiate between deceleration and depreciation. Yes. 
And I don't, we're going to talk more about that when we go through the slides and, and the, the commentary because some of these numbers are just dramatic. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I look at a lot of the national numbers every day. Mary's more local. She's uh, got her pulse on a lot of the local things more. Mm -hmm. But you look at last year's price changes, national number up 17.5%. It's crazy looking at some of these specific states and how fast they're going up. Like, no wonder all these states hate us Californians because we're all moving out and, <laughs> and driving up their prices. Right. But California is still 19.6%. Mm -hmm. yep. Right. Now, you know, if, if somebody would have asked me before I started looking at this, what's the, where are we going to find the biggest appreciation? I would have said Texas. You hear a lot of people talk about Texas, right? Yep. And they're not the biggest. They're not. I don't know. What do you are you looking at the slide there? Who's got the highest appreciation? It looks like Arizona does it 27.4. Pretty pretty amazing. And unless you go up into the mountains in Arizona, it's pretty hot there. Yeah. I'll, I'll take our climate over theirs, but it, no regardless no matter where we look on the charts, there's I don't see any what's I don't even what is the lowest? I mean, we think about price appreciation, I don't even see anything that's that low. On the whole, I mean, I see a 10 point DC. 10, D6. Yeah. Six. <laughs> there you go. That makes sense. 6.6. 6, uh, we don't even want to talk about there. Over the last five years, look at the number. What's the no California number? I've got old eyes, Mary. What's the California number Ooh. for last five years? 58.2. 58.2. We're going to have to get you closer. Yeah. Right. Start yelling. Yeah. 58.2. 58.2. 58. But I, Idaho, 118.2. 118.2. In the last five years. Wow. Which doesn't surprise me. I went and got licensed in Idaho uh -huh. to be, as a loan officer. And they give you temporary authority there. And then they tell you that they'll get, they'll get you your permanent authority so you can work right away. Mm -hmm. And I got a message from them after like three months. It's going to be another year until we give you full authority because their request for licenses increased by 4,700%. Jeez. 4,700%. So, and they couldn't handle it, obviously. Now, okay, this one's, this one, I'll, I'll know this one, Mary, this is probably a little bit, a uh, uh, little much for you. Yeah. Changes since 1991. Prices, <laughs> the change of prices since Mary was born. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you were born? 92, early yeah. 92. Okay. 291% for California. Yeah. I mean, that's just amazing. 258% nationally. California, 291%. Okay, so we looked backwards. Now let's look forward. Now, this one just fascinates me because the company that has been wrong all the time, I don't know if they're going to be wrong again. CoreLogic, is, they do a great job of looking backwards. I don't know if we want to ever take it what they say going forward because 2020, I think they came up that real estate was going to depreciate by 6.6%. Yeah. But they missed just by about 25%. Oof. In 2021, they said real estate was not going to go up or it was going to be flat. Yeah, they missed that one too. Yep. Now they say real estate for next year, for this year, up 9.6% and they're an outlier again. They overshot it, I think, to make up for it. <laughs> there you go. Now, the one that I that, that we share all these all these slides, if you want any, any of these data, just give us a call at 800-306-1990. Our team would be happy to get them to you. What I like most is the home price expectation survey. Home, home price expectation survey is an average of over 100 economists, bankers, Real estate professionals, academics, 6.3%. That's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a safe number, right? 6.3. So that's a, that's a good one there too. Now, why do we say that real estate is going to keep on going? You got to understand markets, right? That's the first thing to understand here. So right now, I don't know, Mary, what do you think the, the supply is of, of homes on the how, how much inventory is out there? Um, I actually pulled up some local numbers for you to share. So this report came out, um, reports on housing, which is a more localized report that we subscribe to. So in Orange County total, the current actives is 1,406. 
the demand, so the pendings in the last 30 days, 2,195. And then the market time, 19 days on market is average. 19, 19. days. And they say seller's market is anything under 60. Anything under 40 is like hot, hot seller's market. Under like, 40 days, yeah. Yeah, so 19 days. So the chart we have here, they go hours. nationally. For according to the National Association of Realtors, national numbers, a seller's market is anything under six months. Mm -hmm. And we're under, in, in Orange County, about a half a month. Yeah. And I mean, it's just been consistently going out. So market time two years ago was 48 days. Market time one year ago was 24. Market time four weeks ago was 23. Okay, so drop in and drop in. Yeah, and so a neutral market, you've got home price, home prices will appreciate with inflation if you've got a six to seven month supply of inventory. Mm -hmm. We don't have anywhere close to that. Oh no. Buyer's market is greater than seven months. So remember these these dates or these timelines. Seller's market means there's less than six months supply on hand. A neutral market is six to seven months. A buyer's market is seven months. Now, new listings. So December, we go back to June. That was the highest. 447,000 new listings. Mm -hmm. Give us December. Where are we 200, 232,000. Half of what there was in, in June, roughly. Mm -hmm. So we're not getting the properties aren't going on the market. Active listings dropping again. So the active monthly listings in, is 483,000 in December. Just amazing. But here's the issue. Here's what we want to talk about when we come back. Housing bubble. Do you, th <laughs> <laughs> Do you think there is one? No. Well, guess what? Because you're, you're, you're a licensed realtor. Mm -hmm. Just about half the agents think there is. Oh. 44%. <laughs> but here's what's important, and here's what you and I need to chat about when we come back. 77% of consumers believe that there's that are worried about a housing bubble. Mm -hmm. What about now you and I have talked about this yes. other than the, the very quick recession of 2020, mm -hmm. you only remember one. You only lived through one other. Yep. Now that recession, real estate didn't go down because of the recession. It, yeah. <laughs> right. A lot of people look at that and say, well, there was a recession and real estate dropped. No real estate dropped causing a recession mm -hmm. big big difference so we're going to talk about that we're going to dig into that one when we come back you're listening to ron siegel radio discussing your real estate current events and the financial markets we will also get into if i can find my notes here how supply and demand can impact your buying and selling goals how could the fed raising interest rates they're going to do it this week how could that affect you all that and more you can reach me anytime off air number 800-306-1990 800-306-1990 or ronsegalradio.com, facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel one on YouTube, Ron Siegel, the number one on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Ron Siegel Radio, your home and mortgage connection. Do you know a homeowner experiencing divorce? Do you know a real estate reference and the divorce decree could cost tens of thousands of dollars? A certified divorce mortgage planning and real estate report could save you thousands of dollars, and it's free from your local certified divorce lending professional. Reach out to Ron today. Ronismylender.com. Again, Ronismylender.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037, Equal Housing Lender. Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564, complete a three minute complimentary survey, and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. 
Are you a veteran, own a home, and need money? The Siegel Lending Team is here to help veterans refinance and get the money they need. The VA 100 lets you borrow up to 100% of your home's value, refinance your mortgages, consolidate credit cards, and lower your payments by an average of $700 a month. And the Siegel Lending Team knows that character means more than a credit score. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by the California Department of Corporations, NMLS 21037, and DRE number 0186945. We're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio. Or anytime at 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990. The real-time real estate segment today being brought to you by the area trusted real estate professionals of Ron Siegel Radio. Visit rsrhomedigest.com, rsrhomedigest.com. Find out exactly what the market believes about your property. I'm sorry, what the market, yeah, market believes about your property, what the county recorder knows about your property, and it's a once a month email. All you've got to do is visit us, rsrhomedigest.com. If you're looking for shopping for a property, rsrhomescout.com, rsrhomescout.com. Great information about real estate and no advertising. Unless you like to get all that junk mail and spam and phone calls. You know, I've, I did that one time just to went on there to see what it's like. I did do one, one little thing there that's you know maybe a little stealth. I set up a new Gmail account, opened up a Google Voice number and used that number. That way I could shut it back down and get rid of all those calls. Well, maybe, I, maybe somebody didn't like that, but I did it anyway. How supply and demand can impact your buying and selling goals in today's housing market. There are far more buyers looking for homes and sellers listing their homes based on the concept of supply and demand. This means home prices will naturally rise. Why is that? When there are more people trying to buy an item than there are making that item available for sale, that drives prices up. And that's exactly the case in today's housing market. So knowing what's happening with the inventory of homes for sale and the demand for housing is crucial for today's buyers and sellers. Nationally, demand is high and supply is very low. The latest buyer and seller activity data from the National Association of Realtors, NAR, indicates buyer traffic heavily outweighs seller traffic today as shown in various maps that you can get from us. There are a lot more buyers out there than sellers. What does this mean if you're a seller? Supply is struggling to keep pace with demand. In fact, the inventory of homes for sale recently hit an all-time low. That gives you an incredible advantage when you sell your house. With so few listings, it's likely more potential buyers will view your house, especially if you work with an agent, to price it right. That means there's a high chance you'll receive multiple offers and buyers will enter a bidding war for your house, and that dynamic can drive the sale price of your home up. What does it mean if you're a buyer? As a buyer with fewer options available, you're likely to see more competition. So you need to be strategic to win. First, make sure you have a trusted professional on your side. Your real estate agent will help you understand your local market and work with you to act quickly when the time is right. Even when it's a challenge to find a home, you can still succeed as a buyer today if you have a trusted advisor on your side every step of the way. Bottom line, whether you're a home buyer, seller, or both, knowledge is power. Give me a call at 800-306-1990. Be happy to put you in touch with a great real estate professional anywhere within the sound of my voice. That is like that <laughs> FM DJ voice. Yeah, that, that was nice. That was a good touch. <laughs> there we go. Okay, that's the that's the real time real estate segment, brought to you by the area trusted real estate professionals of Ron Siegel Radio, RSRHomeDigest.com, RSRHomeDigest.com, and RSRHomeScout.com. Get back to our report here. Existing sales hit a 15 year record. So usually, if there's a bubble you think that sales are going to drop, right? Mm -hmm. We're not seeing that. No, I mean, look, I mean, even just the local numbers I gave you where like the, where the listing supply is and where the demand is almost double what the supply is still. Right. Like that's really got to shift the opposite direction where demand really drops and the supply shoots up. Do you see that happening? No. I mean, what would be the, I don't know what, we know that the Federal Reserve is, is going to do their best to, to, to impact interest rates. Mm -hmm. And that might, temporarily scare people yeah it might scare a few people away but there's still a lot of demand out there so many people looking for homes it's just crazy 
So in existing home sales, 2019, 5.3 million, 2025, 5.6 million, 2021, 6.1 million. That's homes that sold. Mm -hmm. That's not people that just are thinking about it. That's actually transactions that are closed. Yep. Big numbers. Now, let's go back and look at the last time because we're still talking about the concept of all those people that think that there's a bubble. The loans and billions of, of dollars for people that couldn't really afford to buy a house. <laughs> right? I mean, they've got a, a, a FICO score under 620. Yeah. Now, yes, I know that you can get a loan with a FICO score under 620. Our friends at Geneva Financial, they'll do it. But is it wise? Uh, you're going to pay for it. You're going to pay a price for it. So in 2000, 2003, 2007, I will admit I, I was doing loans way back then, even before that, for a lot of decades before that. I'm not going to say how many. But you look at it in 2006, it was almost $400 billion in loans just to people with a FICO score under 620. Yeah. Probably not, uh, not good news. Now, I can't see in, in 2021, the third quarter, I think it's what, about 60 billion? That looks about right, yeah. So 60 billion uh, against 400 billion, that's about a set one, set one seventh. Right, so it's a, a just a small fraction. Mm -hmm. People that are buying can afford to can afford it, or they have a good payment history at least. Mm -hmm. So credit's not the issue. Let's think about if you get involved in this game uh, with an inventory at an all-time low. Buyers are still having a difficult time finding a home. That's Lawrence Yoon, chief economist at the National mm -hmm. Association of Realtors. But let's think about this: the net worth. Of a renter, I, I heard. So I heard an interesting uh, comment the other day. The vast majority of America wants to live with a roof over their head. Okay, that makes sense, right? Yeah. You either have one or two options: <laughs> homeowner or home renter. Yes. I don't know of any other. Tent doesn't count. No. I, I know there are some people in Venice that have a tent over their head. I've seen more and more of those. Isn't that the <laughs> truth? But look at the net worth, Mary, of the people as of 2021, of people that are own their home. Versus people that are renters. Mm -hmm. Share those numbers with yeah. us. So it says homeowner is 300000 A renter, their net worth is 8000 That's scary. That is. That's really scary. Like Now, think about this. In Orange County, a median home price, $950,000. Mm -hmm. If that home, last year they, we said the price is appreciated, what do you say, 19%, something like that? Yeah. So just can we call it 20% so I can okay. do the math easier? <laughs> That's $180,000 in net worth in just one year. Yep. Now, we don't expect that every year. No. Not healthy. No. But at $900,000, if it goes up the norm of 5.4%, 54000 mm -hmm. Still a lot of money. Yeah. What did, your, what did your property appreciate? What did your net worth do from the rent? Nothing. Nothing. You're probably paying more rent now because the prices are skyrocketing there too. 22% appreciation. Net worth of a typical homeowner, 40 times the net worth of a renter. So National Association of Realtors gives us, while the booming housing market contributed significantly to the recovery of the U.S. economy, research has consistently shown that homeownership is also associated with multiple economic and social benefits to individual homeowners. Homeownership has always been an important way to build wealth. Yeah. And that's why I say it's like scary when I look at those numbers, like for the renters, their net worth is $8,000. Like what's their retirement plan? Like uh, thing, a prayer. You know? <laughs> a prayer. A prayer. Yeah. Hope you die early. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we did have Todd Halterman on about two weeks ago and he said one out of five people never make it to retirement. Yeah. So, well, if you only have $8,000 in net worth. You might not want to make it to retirement Yeah. because you're never, your, your retirement means you're going to work until you're 95. Yeah. Yeah, you're not. You're going to stop working toes up. Average days on the market. You gave us some of these numbers a little bit ago, Mary. Average nineteen days on average for the for the country, mm -hmm. right? Mary gave us the the local numbers. Existing home sales since January 2014 dramatically increased. Exist the year over year. Every region, existing home sales are going crazy. Yep. You know, I'm just just looking at every chart just uh baffles me i mean it they're they're one after another they're really good the only one that's bad is 
the 150 to 200,000 or 200 to 299, those were those were properties that we did see sales during the Great Recession. Mm-hmm. We're not there right now. Amazing. So how quick are the sales happening? Months to, for completion to sold? Two and a half months. Right? It's, it's crazy how quickly they're going. And I'm trying to find there was some. And that's just new homes, right? That's not even resale. That's just new homes. Right. They're on the, and some of the builders are saying, you know, something, I think we're going to hold the inventory. Mm-hmm. Wait for it to appreciate, Wait for it to even, appreciate more. even more. Right? Get another 20% by holding it for a year. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've heard like people even saying like some people are being bought out of their contracts. Like they, you know, put the deposit down months and months ago. They started building. Now the builder's like, well, let me buy you out of your contract because I can sell it for way more than you bought it for. And it's not even done yet. That's good. That's well, you know, something if you're buying it for the purpose of as an investment, mm-hmm. take the money and run. Yeah. Right. I mean, because you can then put a larger down payment mm-hmm. on a property if you can find another property, right? You can put <laughs> a larger down payment on the next one. Yeah. It's just fascinating. Home sale, home sales price of existing homes in the western region up 8.8%. Change in sales. You know, if you look at the charts, there's no logical thought as to why any any property is gonna gonna start slowing down. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, I, I can't I can't fathom the reason that you know interest rates will slow it. Yeah. But, but I mean, even all the properties that need a lot of work, they're not even sitting for that long because the investors are going in, snatching them up, putting a little bit of money and flipping them for way more. That's the whole idea right there. And, and when we come back, I want to talk about buyer activity leaps as 83 markets hit double digit showings. Per, you seeing showings going up on each listing? Um, Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I think the showings have always sort of been consistent. I think the... Offers aren't coming in as much as they were, okay. you know, a few months ago, like where we were seeing like 20 offers on each property. It's more like five or six offers on each property now, but it seems like the showings are still there. I heard an agent yesterday make a comment that he's got an open house going this weekend mm-hmm. and Friday, Saturday, Sunday, if they don't have a hundred families come through, they're going to be disappointed. Oh, wow. A hundred families <laughs> right now. Uh, you know, that's, that's a lot of people looking for one property. They, there's oh, only yeah. one of them. Yep. Right, they can't do anything more. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate, current events, and the financial markets. We got a lot to go through in the, in these slides, and I would, there's some good conversation. We might skip our your credit. Well, we better not because we got it's about the Federal Reserve. You can reach me anytime. Off air number 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990 or ronsegalradio.com, facebook.com forward slash Ron Siegel Radio. And if you miss any part of our broadcast, Ron Siegel one on YouTube. Ron Siegel the numeral one on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back. In just a few. Ron Siegel Radio. Your home and mortgage connection. Are you paying rent because you cannot afford to live in your dream home? Are you paying rent because you don't believe you have the down payment funds to purchase your own home? At Siegel Lending Team at RonIsMyLender.com has up to $25,000 to help qualified people purchase their own home at amazing interest rates. Contact the Siegel Lending Team today at RonIsMyLender.com. Again, RonIsMyLender.com. Licensed under NMLS 217037. RonIsMyLender.com. Are you a veteran, own a home, and need money? The Siegel Lending Team is here to help veterans refinance and get the money they need. The VA 100 lets you borrow up to 100% of your home's value, refinance your mortgages, consolidate credit cards, and lower your payments by an average of $700 a month. And the Siegel Lending Team knows that character means more than a credit score. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by the California Department of Corporations, NMLS 21037, and DRE number 01869452. Homeowners over the age of 62 are taking back financial control after retirement with reverse mortgages, and the Siegel Lending Team is here to help you use it to your advantage. Call Ron Siegel with Geneva Financial to receive your free information booklet with no obligation. The booklet answers all your questions, and the best part is you still own your home. Call Ron Siegel at 1-800-306-1990 
or visit ronsegalradio.com. Are you earning a safe, secure 10 plus percent return on your investments? Is your credit score over 800? Are you living in the home of your dreams or simply where you think you can afford? If the answer to any of these questions is no, what are you doing about it? Text ATP to 79564, complete a three minute complimentary survey and the area trusted professionals of Ron Siegel Radio will reach out to you to develop a success strategy for you. Again, all you need to do is text ATP to 79564. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That is my message, and I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800 306 1990. 800 306 1990. 1990, the Your Credit Matters segment today being brought to you by creditsanitizer.com. You have a credit report, it's wrong. What are you doing about it? Uh, how could the Fed raising interest rates affect you? Federal Reserve expected to increase its federal funds rate several times this year. Consumers don't pay the Fed funds rate directly. It's how much financial institutions pay for overnight loans. But raising this rate can have a rippling effect throughout the economy. Here's a closer look at what might happen and how you could be prepared. Debts could become more expensive when you're paying off a fixed rate loan, such as a personal, auto, or mortgage loan. Your interest rate won't change after you take out the loan. However, the rate on variable rate loans could rise with the increasing Fed funds rate. If you have a credit card or credit card debt or variable rate installment loan, you might see your interest rate or minimum monthly payments rise. Paying off your credit cards as quickly as possible could help you save on interest and may improve your FICO score. Make sure you pay off those credit cards the right way. RSRCCPayment.com, RSRCCPayment.com. You can also look into transferring the debt to a new credit card with a 0% APR intro offer and paying it down while you're not accruing interest. But consider the cost of a potential balance transfer fee and whether you'll actually come out ahead. You might also see rates for new fixed rate loans start to creep up, particularly for personal and auto loans. Mortgage rates aren't as directly tied to the federal funds rate, but mortgage rates have been rising. If you want to refinance to a lower rate mortgage, you might have to move quickly. Savings rates might not react as quickly. Surprise. Even though they charge you more quicker, they don't pay you more for your money as quick. While borrowers may be paying more for their debt soon, savers might not see the rates on bank accounts rises quickly. Savings accounts aren't tied to the federal funds rate and banks won't necessarily rush to increase how much interest they pay. Some banks may decide to keep their rate low until they feel competitive pressure or decide they need to attract more depositors. If you're not earning much on your savings, you could look into high yield checking and savings accounts. These pay high rates, but often require you to meet certain requirements such as using your debit card a certain number of times and signing up for electronic statements. Many savers are also looking at I-bonds. There's also some other high-quality bonds that our friends have talked to us about. If you want more information on those, give me a call at 800-306-1990. I do not sell them, but I know people who can educate you on them. Inflation and investment returns might slow down. Inflation rates have passed 7%. They'll get over 9 or 10% soon. First time since the 1980s, and you may have already noticed, the rising cost of goods and services, one reason the Fed increases its target fund rate is to bring down inflation by slowing down the economy. The idea is that higher interest rates will lead to less borrowing and turn people and companies won't spend as much. Investors may also notice that the rising rates lead to lower stock market returns. If businesses have to pay more interest, when they borrow money to expand their business, they won't have as much profit for shareholders. Additionally, the decrease in demand for products and services by businesses and people could lead to lower prices. However, the change won't happen overnight, especially when the supply chain disruptions are still causing problems. In the meantime, you may need to prepare your budget for higher costs. Good credit can still help you get a lower rate, so make sure you work on that credit score. MyFICO.com, MyFICO.com, that's where I go to check my FICO scores. I get a notice every day if anything's either a payments made, balance changes, inquiry myfico.com. No, I don't get paid from them. I pay them to get this information. That's your Credit Matters segment brought to you by 
creditsanitizer.com. You have a credit report. It is wrong. What are you doing about it? So I want to chat a little bit more on why things are different this time than last time as far as from a bubble standpoint. Mm -hmm. Now, 2000, when did you, you bought, you, you, 2000 was probably a little early for you to buy a house. Yeah, I was in high school. In high school, <laughs> there you go. 2003 then really wouldn't have been a good time. 2003, four, five, six, seven. People were buying houses and they really couldn't afford them. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, I did loans back then. There was a two-step process. You might've heard this one. The fog and mirror? Fog and mirror. You can fog a mirror and you're approved. That's mm -hmm. it. That's all it took to get a loan. So that ends up creating more demand. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, what ends up happening in those cases? Well, the people can't afford to buy the house. Yeah. But they got it anyway. Yeah. I mean, when money is that easy to access, everybody's going to go access it and get Why it to a you? home. Right? Exactly. So then, then what happens? Well, start raising interest rates a little bit. Mm -hmm. Start realizing that maybe not everybody can access it. We did have the, the credit freeze. And all of a sudden, because those people with a FICO, now, now up until probably what, about a, oh, two, three, four months ago, mm -hmm. you still had to have a, a good FICO score to get a loan. Yep. You had to qualify. Yeah. Right? Well, surprise, surprise. You have to have a job. <laughs> you have to prove your income or have mm -hmm. money in the bank. Show an ability to repay. That's what the FICO score is. Yep. Well, when, you, when those things, when the, when the, it's like playing musical chairs. Right when the music stops, there's one chair too too few, mm -hmm. and you know the next time there's another chair too few, mm -hmm. and 2008 hits. Now there's not enough chairs, there's not enough money to go around, yep. And the real estate market, all that, all those people that were just buying a house because prices were going up. You know the definition of a bubble: hmm. prices go up because prices are going up. Yep. Right now, prices are not going up because prices are going up. They're going up because of demand. There's demand. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who want a house. And the lack of supply. And there's nothing available. Mm -hmm. So 2008, we start seeing, okay, those people that couldn't really afford a house weren't paying the bill. Yeah. And now they can't go and get another house, which is what was causing the prices to go up. Mm -hmm. Right? So now we look at it and we see, okay, so those people aren't getting loans. Now, if you think that it was a good idea for everybody in the world to buy a house, if you can afford it. Mm -hmm. it's a good goal right yeah i mean you've talked about this many times your friends are they out buying houses yet have you convinced them yeah they're trying but again it's the market i mean you know it's hard to break into it at this point what do you so so what is your counsel then you know <laughs> well i mean the best time to buy a house is what 20 years ago is what they say right, the right. same thing like best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago second best but when you can afford Today. it when you can yeah as soon as you can like exactly so i always say like if even if you can't buy your dream home, start somewhere. Buy what you can afford. Even if it's a crappy one-bedroom condo, you know you're not going to spend a long time in there. Buy, get your foot in the door somewhere. So do you have friends that are renting those one-bedroom condos? Mm -hmm. Do you see any? Do you see more people in the future that will rent those one-bedroom condos? Yep. So here's the issue. When I was, when I was young, there was a, a day. And I went to look at my first house and I actually bought my first condo was a two bedroom condo. Mm -hmm. And my parents said to me, you're crazy. Why would anybody buy a two bedroom condo? Mm -hmm. Actually, my second and third houses were two bedrooms also. I guess I'm, I'm still crazy. Yeah. Right. But the times have changed. So if your parents are telling you don't buy it because it's a two bedroom condo, mm -hmm. things have changed. Yeah. You got to get in the market. Exactly. Now, if you get that one bedroom, as you put it, crappy condo. Mm -hmm. Right now, we, we just I just came from a meeting with about 60 or 70 people. And there was a real estate agent there that said they've got a house or a condo in Anaheim Hills that's going to come on the market for $495,000. Mm -hmm. Not the greatest. Pro I know the area. I don't know the property specific. But it's not the greatest piece of property in the whole world. Mm -hmm. But it's a start. Yeah, exactly. And I bet that property will rent at some point. Yes. Right? That's the whole idea. Yep. Is get in the game. Now, if you get 10% appreciation this year, and I don't remember the exact number that we said just a minute ago, but we did get a number that, that we're looking at of, of appreciation this year from several of the, several of the companies. I think it was like 6.3 was the average. Okay, so 6.3 on a five hundred thousand dollar condo. It was 495, but I'm gonna round off because it's it's easy. <laughs> 
That's about thirty thousand dollars in appreciation. Yep. In in a in a year, mm -hmm. if that works, we, we don't guarantee anything, but we look at it and they say, okay, six thirty thousand dollars. Do that three years in a row. Now you got a hundred thousand dollars to go and buy something else. Yep. And so, do you sell that last one, or do you do you take the money out and keep the last one? You're talking to me. The original. Oh. Your, your counsel. <laughs> Oh, Talk like about your, your counseling people, Mary. Counseling. <laughs> yeah. So I always say, hold what you can. If you can, hold, if you can afford to hold it and go buy the next piece of property, you're going to be better off long term. But if you need to sell, then sure, sell so you can upgrade into what you want. So what you need to do is, and I agree with completely with Mary, right? So the idea there is sit down with a lender and find out what you can afford. That's your first step. Do you have to go and do you have to sell to get your next property or can you take money out of your property that you live in now and go buy another one? That's mm -hmm. doable, right? Yeah. So here's the concept. Now you have to, you got to, you got to plan ahead because right now you don't have time to go and refinance and then buy, mm -hmm. right? What, what is the average? What, what is one of the, I'll throw it this way to you. When you see people that are getting offers accepted, mm -hmm. do the agent, do the sellers want or not want a lot of contingencies? Yeah, there's still not a lot of contingencies there. So explain contingencies and how we might win a, a op bidding war based on contingencies. Yeah, so contingencies are something that has to happen for the sale to go through. So example, if I have a home right now and I'm going to go buy another one, sometimes there's a contingency that I have to sell my home first before the other one will close. So that's a contingency to the sale loan, it, you know, being able to qualify for the loan. That's a contingency. There's a loan contingency. There's an appraisal contingency. So it's all these things that have to happen. All these boxes that have to be checked before the sale will go through. Now I spoke uh, in the opening segment today, we were actually chatting about the idea that now, again, I don't, I, I very rarely see this. So there's a new, a residential purchase agreement. There is. And I used to say, okay, well, you can just check box J4 on the residential purchase <laughs> agreement. And that basically says that there's no loan contingency. Mm -hmm. That's still there somewhere. I don't know where it is. Yeah, somewhere in there still. Okay. But now there's a new box on there that I was just told that says, because it used to say, are you pre-approved? Maybe, maybe it wasn't even there. Pre-approved, pre-qualified. Was that on there before? I don't think that was even there. I don't think so but now i know there's a there's a box for pre uh pre-qualified mm -hmm. pre-approved or pre-underwritten mm -hmm. that's going to get you a little bit more helping you as the as a realtor or your team as realtors mm -hmm. it's going to help you go out with the with and have a stronger offer yes now we know about 30 percent of the properties are being bought with uh with cash mm -hmm. but are the rest of them First time home buyers generally are not buying with cash. Yeah. Unless you have a rich uncle and or grandparent <laughs> or someone like that. Right? So they're going to they're going to need a they they have to find some other way and as a real estate professional that's what you're looking for is how do, how do I structure this so that my client wins? Exactly. Now, I'm going to go back to the very beginning of what I've said many many times on Ron Segal Radio. I don't need a realtor, you don't need a realtor to go and find a piece of property that's listed for sale. Mm -hmm. Here's what you do need. Now you know about properties that are coming before they hit the for sales for sales signs, right? Yep. Does Zillow find out about those properties before or after you? After. After you. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to find more properties, you have to work with a professional. Does Zillow help uh, give any guidance in going through the contract? No. Do you have, they, are they helping anybody with with uh, contingencies? No. Negotiations. Nope. Speed bumps. Nope. Uh, and I don't even know all of them, mm -hmm. right? I know that you have a, a home inspection with a request for repairs. Mm -hmm. They're not going to help on that either. Nope. That's what you need the professional for. That's what your team is doing. Yep. So yeah, you might be able to find a property. Yes, I know that I have a service that'll find properties for you. RSRHomeScout.com. RSRHomeScout.com. It's going to tell you all the properties that are available anywhere in the continental United States. And, it, it, and it's updated several you know, every, I think it's every 15 minutes it's updated. You don't need a agent to help you with that part. Contract to close. 
That's fair. Yeah, yeah, that's the most important part. <laughs> right? I mean, you're dealing with your largest asset, your largest purchase, your family's safety, your family's security. If you've got kids, where are they going to school? Can they walk to school? Do they need to have an armed guard to take them to school? Right? Those are all issues that you need to be thinking about. And if you're moving from another area, from one area to another area, you may not know those things. Mm-hmm. Right? If you're moving, I, 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 my wife kids me. I, I grew up in 92804. I moved to 92807. Well, long distance, same city. Yeah. But completely different demographics. Oh, yeah. Right? So you need to understand that. You need a professional realtor is going to know that answer. Mm -hmm. You got to talk to him. If you want more information, give me a call at 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990. Happy to put you in touch with great real estate professionals anywhere in the sound of my voice. If you want to meet Mary and her team, give me a call again, 800-306-1990. And as always, I ask, Set that first radio preset button to come back here and join Ron Siegel Radio, where we only speak about items affecting your house and your bank account. Thanks to all of our sponsors. A big thanks to Josh and Sean who are engineering us today. And, of course, a special thanks to you for spending a little bit of your day with us. That's all for Ron Siegel Radio. Again, if you have any questions or to meet any of our guests, call me anytime, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsiegelradio.com. And remember... Make a lot of money so you can help a lot of people and have a lot of fun. Have a great day. We'll talk to you next time on Ron Siegel Radio. 